Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War, and we're on part 39 of our Confederate Let's Play as we play through the Grand Campaign in Ultimate General as the Confederacy. In our last video, we launched the uh, historical attack on the Union flank at Chancellorsville against the 12th Corps, and we successfully overran the Federals, winning the Battle of Chancellorsville, outdoing Jackson, and winning the Battle of Chancellorsville on May 2nd. We are now into, what is it, May 3rd, and the Federals are launching a flank attack of their own. Uh, they're advancing out of Fredericksburg with Sedgwick's Corps, threatening the flank of the Confederate Army, and we're going to meet them at the Battle of Salem Church. So this battle is very much part of Chancellorsville. It's taking place just a few miles east of Chancellorsville, and yet it's its own independent action. Uh, our army has been savaged in these first two days of Chancellorsville. We won the battle, but in many ways it was almost a Pyrrhic victory. But with that being said, we are fortunately allowed to use our third corps, which has been unengaged to this point. So we have some fresh troops. I'm pretty confident I'll be able to resist uh, Sedgwick, but we'll find out here in this video. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from a couple of days ago. Again, as a reminder, my live streams are transitioning exclusively over to Twitch, at least for the time being. My link will be in the description for that. But that's enough about that. Let's go ahead and jump back into this stream uh, from a couple of days ago. I hope you guys enjoy it. Leave your thoughts below. And away we go. Yep, Salem Church is one of those bonus battles. All right, and we've got our fresh third corps to fight it. Sedgwick's corps is approaching with a strong division via Orange Turnpike. We have sent as many brigades as possible to stop his advance. It's a little bit gamey to use the third corps theoretically if it's supposed to be way off far afield, but anyway. We must stop him at the crossroads near Salem Church. The small ridge at this location can offer us a defensive advantage. If General Sedgwick repulses us, he may be able to flank our force at Chancellorsville. We will not allow this. We've got 10 brigades. We've got some cavalry. I'd rather have more infantry in this. Where are guns here? I want to use the 20-pounders. I'm going to pull the 10-pound parrots, and we're going to replace them with a brigade of infantry. In my view, the infantry is going to be worth it. We're going to stack up the troops along the roadway. So we can advance rapidly. Put the artillery in the rear. We'll put some cavalry over here. Advance. Alright, so pause. There's the location we've got to get to. And advance. Ah. I hate that I have to draw every marching way to give it the most effectiveness to like, keep them in the open. It is what it is. That's not a very good route. So we'll go here. Hopefully we can rack up some kills here. Weaken their overall army strength following this battle. And then also preserve our third corps. Give some good experience. Get some good weaponry. And what have you. Could really use some more roadways though. Let's uh, Cavalry up here too. I'm going to use the cavalry more to pursue. My goal in this fight is to fight it to its conclusion and annihilate the federal force. All right. Let's see. Ah. Um. Why was Lee left hanging around Fredericksburg? Technically, one of the cores of the Confederate Army at the Battle of Chancellorsville was not even on the field. It was in um, North Carolina under General Longstreet doing some foraging and whatnot. So the fact that we didn't have Lee in that last fight is meant to simulate that. Okay. Go ahead and double quick this lead brigade. I don't want to get everybody all tired, but I do want to get at least one or two brigades there quickly. Sedgwick is coming on the other end of the map. He starts off over in this general direction. All right. I have taken a core value in casualties. Well, I almost took a core value in that last battle in Chancellorsville. Remember, guys, I lost about 18,000 men. All right. Okay. All right, we're moving three brigades. Let's move a fourth up. Again, moving a lot of them at the double. 
I'm going to try and make a defensive line in this wood line. So we're going to put two brigades here, maybe one brigade in the north, and then some artillery here in the open ground in the center. Move our cavalry forward to spot the enemy, hopefully, before they show up. If I have to, I can sacrifice the cavalry to buy some time. Come on. Move forward out of the wood. Don't use it. It's dumb. One thing I really like about Scourge of War that doesn't exist in this game is the ability to march by roads. You're going to be in the north woods. You're going to be in the south woods. And you're going to form up on his left. But you just get like this traffic jam of troops given the way that you've got to command them. And they do slow down too. I mean, these troops marching into each other are, slow, are slower than they otherwise would be. Because of the fact that the road is congested, you can definitely, you can visibly see that impact. Okay. Gettysburg comes before Chickamauga, guys. Plus, I've got plenty of prestige I can pour into buying some extra recruits. I think I should be able to recover. You're going to position yourself between them. Green, your, Greg, your brigade with your Harper's Ferries. We're going to deploy some skirmishers from Keith's Brigade into this north wood here. Face south to flank any advance on these north wooders. Hillary, get up there. Woods here. Chickamauga is the hardest battle, you think, for the Confederates, or just in general? All right. Subject's first division is attacking, but where? There they are. Pull the cavalry back here to guard the flank. We'll use them to pursue when the moment comes. The advance. Artillery in the here. Second battery in the woods here. This is brigade. will form up on the objective spot. He'll be our reserve. Put one more brigade in the woods and then... I guess we'll just have to double quick them. These guys are recovering some of their condition from their running, given that the enemy isn't immediately upon us. Okay. Skirmishers advancing on Keith's brigade. I don't think they got a shot off. There you go, the skirmishers driven off. Back on their supports, 100 casualties without loss. That's the way it's all supposed to go. No, don't you pursue. Stay back. I don't like that Greg's brigade is in the open here. Debate. I don't want to just pull him back here. Be in the wood line facing south. We don't need a contiguous line. Those those troops are close enough to support each other. And we'll have some artillery here anyway. Race, you move as a reserve in the north. Morton, you'll kind of act as a reserve, but you'll also extend the line further south. The cavalry will move down here. Well, the first division advanced to pretty much no purpose, I suppose. Oh, there's some skirmishers as well, so maybe they were trying to get around our flank down there in the south. Looks like it's a good decision here to extend the line, then. He's in the Napoleons, and the 20-pound parrots are up here. Can you see from over here? Third divisions are approaching. Don't you place your whole brigade in this wood line. Keith, you get rid of your skirmishers. You, they go back to your position. Race, you can be over here as a reserve. 
right, these enemy are in the open. Our troops are in good cover. Move our cavalry here to kind of scout their flank, and I will pursue if the opportunity presents itself. Stockton, you've got really good cover here. You should be golden to resist this brigade, even though it's 2,500 men. Man, those skirmishers just keep advancing forward. It's going to come in the south, so you advance down there. Drove the skirmishers off. Neil is advancing. As soon as they're in melee with uh, standard, Morton's going to volley him. Oh, he can do it before. Turn and charge and destroy those skirmishers. All right, Neil's brigade is just getting shredded there. Very good, very good. Hold your position standard. I don't want you pursuing into the open. As you kind of already are doing. Back into cover, you idiot. Orders are to hold. Do not move. Already lost more men than I would like. Literally no reason to just give them casual. Checker, his flank's kind of exposed. Kite, you advance there. I mean, all the cavalry over here is hopefully destroying the skirmisher unit. By the looks of it, it is. Losing some casualties, but that's fine. Kite advanced out here against Afer, or whatever his name is. Damage race will come up here. Skirmisher surrendered to us. Very nice. That gives us some additional reinforcements. The bulk of our troops are getting resupplied as they fight. Schaefer's Brigade's being driven in by Kite. He's going to advance. Right, you're still in good cover. You should be in range. Our race is going to come in here. Hopefully these guys can double-team Grant. Nocton's withdrawn, but he's on a wood line, so I'd rather not try and do that. Grant's in actually pretty good cover there, I think, but he's going to have 4,000 men firing at him. Yeah, he's in that building area. All right, advance the guns up here. And then go to there. As many of our men as we can keep in good cover and still push the enemy back. Harris is going to expose his flank, so Stockton will come up here and hit him there to protect Race's flank. Alright. There you go. Harris is driven back. Advance. Cavalry up. Get these guys down to strength a bit. We can start advancing here. I think we've got a good tactical position here. So, another hour and 20 minutes of this, but feels like we're in good good shape here. Granted, I am advancing more so into the open than I probably should. Wheaton just took two volleys in the open ground. He's getting cavalry flank charging into his flank. Alright, he's routing. Bartlett's routing. Q 
Cavalry should uncover some of these federal troops' flank as they turn to face it. There you go, just like with Brown. So even though we may lose that brigade, it's going to uncover the rest of these Yankees into terrible tactical positions and maybe allows us to bag some of them. Cavalry should get out of there without too much more damage, hopefully, but the whole federal line is coming unglued now. Kind of double and we're almost leading a double envelopment against them. I'd like to get back into the woods here so we don't lose too more too much more in the way of manpower. on pressing. Where did our cavalry run to anyway? Alright, over here, that's fine. They, gave, they inflicted more casualties than they lost, and they also helped literally cause the whole flank to cave in, because all these federal units turned to face the cavalry. As a result, they were all flanked by the infantry to their front. Alright, we're gonna move him toward Bartlett's rear. Move some of this artillery forward. Well, we already won Stones River, so if we won the hardest, that's good. All right, move Greg forward, Oates, Kite, all move forward. Continue enveloping them here. Okay. Stones River is tricky just from a, like, positioning perspective. You're all kind of in weird formation, like... You're just too strung out as the Confederates, and then you've got, it's basically a race to the north of the map. So I don't know if it's the hardest battle, but it's certainly from a tactical positioning perspective, a difficult one to manage. Chancellorsville, when I played it in the historical version, was much more difficult from a Confederate perspective because the 12th Corps was stronger than what I found in this battle. So it was, you, you kept attacking these individual small positions and it was very difficult to maintain the impetus of your advance because of that. Okay. So it, it really gave you, I think, a good historical sense of the difficulty of, you know, attacking the enemy over a, a long line without getting your troops all clumped together and kind of dis you know, disemboweled, if you will. Um, which historically was the Confederates' problem. You know, they launched that initial attack, then all the troops became inter inter intermingled, and it was very difficult to kind of keep everyone sorted together, if you will. Probably shouldn't have moved the cavalry in there against Grant. Every retreat the other way, not toward the Yankee brigades that aren't engaged. All right, in. You guys all move here to this wood line and continue firing into the Federals who are now largely in the open. Brown's Brigade. Okay. Actually, this battle is kind of showing that same thing. You're all kind of converging on the same point, and quickly things become disorganized, and everyone's clumped together. It's shrunk. Or maybe we can destroy some of these guys off the map. All right. I take my cavalry management tactics from uh, General Kilpatrick. Uh, my soldiers may call me Kill Cavalry. 
As in, kill my own cavalry? Brigades being driven back. Some of these brigades got to be really close to being like, destroyed. Neil is down to about 900. Bartlett's at about 800. Arbor should be useful in kind of helping mop up. Oh, don't charge all the way out there by yourself, Stockton. You're going to get yourself shot to pieces. Guns have to be our next target, because these are the ones that can really, I think, hinder us and, and make us suffer. Or just keep focusing on the infantry, guys. I would have preferred if you went for the guns, but in any event, someone's shooting at the guns because they're routing as well. Keep pressing forward, driving them to the edge of the map. Gotta make sure we don't let them squeeze out. There's one fresh artillery battery over here. Get into the woods. Move that artillery up here. If they do have time to engage again, they'll prevent them from escaping on the edge of the map. That artillery battery is subject to multiple volleys. forward. There we go. That artillery battery just got destroyed. Okay. They've formed one last line. I'm charging my cavalry forward against Grant. Should be on the verge of retreating. I'm kind of surprised the Federals are hanging on here so long, their morale still seems to be functional. They're not retreating on, like, first volleys or anything like that yet. Some of them might be now. It's kind of hard to keep track of. See multiple of these units just running away. Cavalry just took a volley. Now I'm going to keep kind of trying to press on and see if we can destroy this whole force. That'd be my goal. I'm not going to finish the battle until I've destroyed the whole Yankee host. Best I can. Eat. Go against that one. Okay. Where's our general? Lee is just hanging in the rear. You court martial him for cowardice. Hanging back there. Alright. I think I've now broken the Yankee morale. Now it's just a matter of mopping up. Okay. Should be just about done. There he goes, running off there. Pretty bloody loss. Surprised Grant is still fighting like that. All right. Seem to be having flashbacks, beginning the series sort of where he thinks the A is pinned in the corner, trying to wipe them out for the man. Yeah, I think we did start that in the first battle of the series. Something like that. It was close. Alright. Right, 
we're losing more men than I'd like here, but if we can wipe the whole host out, I think it'll be worth it. Maybe we can charge some units here and cause some surrenders. Bartlett's gone. Oh, her cavalry just got wiped out. Lame! Yeah, pretty much all of our troops are exhausted. I was double-quicking them all over the map. I don't know if anybody's not exhausted. So more or less, it's a battle of extermination. Height's not exhausted. Why don't you go ahead and charge? They're trying to escape out the corner of the map. We'll have to get canister fire from two artillery batteries to get out, though. All right, one of those units is now gone. Let's see, we've got 20 pounders and smooth bores that they're going to have to try and get by. Which it looks like they're going to. You'd think they'd retreat the other direction. Granted, there's nowhere to retreat. Yikes, they just actually fired a volley. Ooh, these Napoleons are doing work. Alright. How low do we have to get? I mean, that battery... That, that brigade was down to 100 men before it just finally vanished. We're not losing much in the way of casualties, though. Most of these units are already... Past the point of being able to shoot back. These three brigades did kind of surprise me with the way they fought against Kite. I think these guys are in melee and they're not, that's why they're not reloading. men inflicted by those Napoleons. These 20 pounders are doing some work too. It only came out last year, Will, in terms of actual formal release. Uh, early access, it was out much, much earlier than that. It was out back in 2016, actually. Shoot your damn guns. There you go. Wow, the canister's not doing anything at this range. That's weird. Maybe they're in too good a terrain. Alright, so that battery of artillery is gone. That about does it for this fight. Grant is losing men too slowly. Maybe we just finish him off. So it ended the battle for me. We committed 14,000 men, lost about 2,600 more. So the campaign casualties are about 21,000 for our men. But the Federals lost 12,000, which brings their campaign casualties up to 31,000 uh, for yet another victory for us. Uh, the goods captured here, a little bit more lucrative. Quite a few Harper's Ferries against not many casualties for us. Also 10 Napoleons, 10 Parrots. Um, and that's about it. So there you go. A victory. Now I'm kind of scared to see what our army is going to look like. We also got an additional uh, 140 or 104 recruits, uh, 10,000 uh, recruits from the victories. So we lost about 21,000 men. We got about half of that back. 
Now, I don't think we have to replace quite everybody because our traits, we've maxed out medicine. So in terms of that, our traits are kind of fine. Like we don't have to, we, we get what 20% of our casualties back. But nonetheless, it's going to be a, a tricky uh, set of management objectives there. I'm going to use my three career points to add one more uh, army organization, which allows us to add five brigades per division and four divisions per core. Still three cores is the max. And then the other two are going to go toward logistics to max that out. So there you go. Uh, we've maxed out logistics, medicine, economy, and politics. Nearly, we're more than halfway up toward army organization. Um, we've got $300,000. We also have 100 prestige. So I'm going to go ahead and use 40 prestige right away to get 5,000 more recruits. Just like that. So that'll bring us up to 17,000 recruits. The next major battle is going to be the battle of, what is it, Gettysburg. So that's going to be a big fight. But we've also got the battle of Brandy Station to kind of try and get us a few more reserves uh, if we are able to win that battle. Uh, maybe get a little bit of the army prestige back. Um, we're going to go ahead and save. And we're going to have a massive, massive job to rebuild this core. You can see here uh, almost 50, well, less than 50% casualties in the 3rd Division. Actually, less than 50% casualties in the second division. The first division lost less than 50%. So the first core lost less than half its strength. The second core lost bleh, about half of its strength. And the third core lost quite a few men as well. In terms of the barracks, we've got several officers wounded. We had, or maybe not any wounded. Apparently, we've got all of our wounded officers back. So we've got quite a few officers to replace um, some of the losses that we had. We did have a couple of officers killed. Uh, actually, I could have sworn. Anyway. Um, so, let's, anyone at the division level, first off, all of our division commanders are okay. Um, so, let's go ahead and get some Brigadier Generals in here first. I like the idea of Major Generals commanding divisions, Brigadier Generals commanding corps, or commanding brigades. All of our division commanders are Major Generals, though. So, we're going to have some Major Generals commanding some brigades, which is horribly, horribly... Um, Overranked, you know, overqualified, if you will. But I'm actually going to put all my best commanders in the first two divisions of the first corps. All of the major generals that we could squeeze in, because I prefer, because again, they're better generals. Um, and then we'll just kind of go down the line of getting everybody brigadier generals uh, in terms of their commands. So we're going to put a brigadier general in command of artillery. Okay. This. We're gonna have a brilliant, we're gonna have a major general in charge of every unit in the first corps, except for the artillery, which we kept at, at brigadier generals. Oh, we still have to build out that fourth division in the first corps, by the way. Go ahead and Pickett was apparently wounded or killed or something. So let's get these officers filled out first. Oh, there's Pickett. Um, and one officer here? No, no one here. Okay, so uh, all of our officers are replaced. Uh, at least all of the losses of officers have been replaced. Let's go ahead and get some of these lieutenant colonels moved out. Everybody should at least be a major general. Commands a brigade. We'll have quite a few still in reserve. Lieutenant Colonel here, you're going to be replaced by Armistead. You are now a commander of artillery. I think everyone here is now at least Brigadier General. A lot of Major Generals as well. And we have quite a few reserves to call upon also as we rebuild some of these units and hopefully build out both these cores, although we won't have the manpower likely to do it. We may just strengthen our first two cores before Gettysburg. All right, and there you have it. The Battle of Salem Church, a resounding Confederate victory. The Battle of Chancellorsville, hopefully not a Pyrrhic victory. We'll find out shortly, I'm sure. Uh, in our next video, we'll take a look at reorganizing the army. I know some of you have said you'd like to see that. I will certainly record a video of me sort of updating the army and its equipment and all of that and getting it ready for the Gettysburg campaign. It's hard to believe that we're already on to the Gettysburg campaign. Uh, I think this is part, what, 39 or thereabouts of the actual series, uh, but we're already to the Battle of Gettysburg. We have yet to lose a battle, although there were times where Chancellorsville felt like we might be losing the battle. The problem is with these kind of big battles, if you lose it, 
you're completely done and you're going to be fired. But that's a topic for another time. In our next video, we'll look at reorganizing the army, and then we will start in earnest in the Gettysburg campaign. I hope you're enjoying this Ultimate General Civil War series, and as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.